So far we have studied uh, two different ways of uh, biasing a transistor and then realizing common source amplifiers using those biasing schemes. Now we will continue our exploration of uh, different ways of biasing. We will continue with uh, what we started that is sensing the current difference at the drain and feeding back to the gate. Okay, And then see another alternative by which we can realize a common source amplifier. So when uh, we sense at the drain and feed back to the gate, we have a MOS transistor with the source, let's say, connected to ground. It's connected to a fixed voltage. When we say feed back to the gate, the idea is that the source side is fixed and gate is variable. It's based on feedback. Then, by connecting a current source I naught to the drain of the transistor, we have a situation where the difference I naught minus ID tends to flow that way. Okay, And we can uh, imagine that there is a parasitic capacitor into which this current is flowing and that is a good way of uh, visualizing things. It tells you exactly what happens uh, when I naught is more than I D or less than I D. Okay. And if uh, I naught is more than I D, this voltage tends to increase. Now, to increase I D, we want the gate voltage to increase. So, in general, the drain voltage is varying in the same sense that we want the gate voltage to vary. Okay, So, we can uh, connect the drain to the gate and complete the feedback network Okay, and this will uh, in steady state ensure that I D equals I naught. Okay, The gate voltage will get adjusted to the threshold voltage plus 2 times I naught by mu n c ox w by l. That is, it is exactly like varying the gate voltage until the current in the MOS transistor becomes exactly equal to I naught. Then, any variation here will stop. Now, this is not the only possibility. We can also have any other block here. Okay, I will just show it like that, indicating that this side is the input and that side is the output of whatever is shown as the triangle. Okay. So, what must happen is the following I naught I naught minus I D. So, if I D is smaller than I naught, V D increases. Also, if I D is smaller than I naught, V G must increase to make I D closer to I naught. Okay. So, putting these two together, we see that our sense of uh, the current difference which is the voltage here, if it increases V G must increase. Okay. So, it is not necessary that V G be equal to V D like here. All we want is that the gate voltage must increase when the drain voltage increases. So, we can complete it through an amplifier or any other device. In fact, in the assignment and in activity questions, you have seen examples where this is not a direct connection like that, but you could have a fixed voltage drop Okay, in either direction, it does not matter. Because now, if this side increases, this voltage is fixed, that side also increases. Okay, And it does not even have to be a simple voltage source like this, it could even be another amplifier or something. All we want is that the output voltage must increase when the input voltage increases. Okay, So, V G must increase when V D increases. So, with this basically means that this amplifier must have a positive incremental gain. It is not even necessary for this block to be linear. Okay, As long as the output increases as the input increases, it is fine. Okay, the output input characteristic could be anything. So, this here I am sketching the output input characteristic of this amplifier or that device whatever it is and it could be a straight line like that, it could be offset from being a straight line or it could have a shape like that or like that, anything is possible. Okay. So, this leads to a huge variety of uh, ways of actually completing the feedback around it. And like I have been emphasizing repeatedly, the only way is to understand the logic 
because sometimes what is in this could be quite complicated okay so that you understand exactly how the biasing is done now let's see other uh, possibilities of realizing common source amplifier using this kind of bias okay let me redraw this with the MOS transistor turned this way okay now I said that if you make uh, many transistors they will uh, all have different characteristics like threshold voltage current factor and so on and also these uh, uh, characteristics vary substantially with temperature now it turns out that if you make uh, two transistors close to each other on an integrated circuit okay the integrated circuit is at the heart of all of our electronics today so it's a small piece of silicon on which number of transistors are fabricated numbering in the billions but let's say you have two transistors uh, right next to each other in such a chip okay first of all the processing happens together in the same machine under very highly controlled conditions so the processing steps for the two transistors will be exactly the same and also because they are on the same chip okay and very close to each other they are not likely to be at very different temperatures okay so on <coughs> a chip if you have two closely spaced transistors then their characteristics will be nearly identical there will be a slight differences but the differences will be much smaller than if you take two separate individually packaged transistors okay so in such circumstances especially in integrated circuit design it is useful to rely on two devices having identical characteristics and in fact a lot of ic design it turns out is done this way okay it turns out on an integrated circuit whether you make resistors or capacitors or transistors their absolute values may not be very accurate that is if you try to realize a 10 kilo ohm resistor it could be anywhere between 8 kilo ohms and 12 kilo ohms but it so happens that if you make two identical structures both of which have to be nominally 10 kilo ohms one of them is 8 kilo ohm the other one will also be 8 kilo ohm it will be very close to the other one if you make two identical structures they will have identical resistances although the exact resistance value may not be known okay so the same goes for capacitors and transistors so a lot of ic design is done by exploiting uh, matching properties of transistors on an integrated circuit now let's assume that we are in such a context so far we didn't use this okay we had only one transistor in the circuit now let's say we have multiple transistors and all of them are matched then let me take another transistor let me call this m0 m1 and i'll say m0 equals m1 meaning that they are well matched okay that is they're also on the same chip so that their temperatures are the same and so on so now the vgs of m0 is such that a current i0 flows in m0 for now let's uh, ignore the dependence of the drain current on the drain source voltage okay the saturation drain current depends only on the gate source voltage that's our assumption for now in that case if we apply this vgs to a transistor which is identical then bias transistor m1 this is just to show that there is some vds more than vgs minus vt okay it doesn't have to be a voltage source you could connect any other circuit to this point just make sure that the drain voltage is more than the gate voltage minus vt okay if you do that then the current flowing here has to be equal to i naught okay so i hope that part is clear because the vgs value here is vt plus square root 2 i naught by mu and c ox wyl that is set by negative feedback and if this vgs is applied to another transistor the current in that will be mu and c ox wyl divided by 2 times vgs minus vt squared and that will be equal to i naught okay so it turns out that this is a very interesting and useful circuit if you apply a current i naught to this transistor you can replicate it in another transistor okay so m1 is also biased at a constant current i naught and this is very useful uh, for several reasons first is that you can make several copies of the current okay now i don't have to stop here i could for instance have another m2 which is also identical to this 
and if it is biased in saturation, then the current here will also be equal to I 0. Okay. So, I can make any number of copies of the current okay. and there is no limit to how many devices I can connect, because these gates of uh, MOS transistors, they do not draw any current. That is, they do not load whatever they are connected to. So, I can connect even 100 devices here and I will have 100 copies of this current. Okay. And this such a structure, where you establish the gate source voltage of uh, one transistor using negative feedback and replicate that voltage on all other transistors, that is known as a current mirror. Specifically, you can mirror it to number of devices, but uh, typically this structure with uh, two devices, this is known as a current mirror. Okay and it is a very widely used uh, block in integrated circuit design, because you can replicate currents like this. Now, it turns out that you can also scale the value of the current. Okay. For instance, let us say that I did not want I naught, but I wanted two times I naught. One obvious way to realize that is by taking two of these copies and connecting them together. Okay. So, for instance, I can take this voltage replicate it on uh, replicate the VGS on two transistors and connect them together where M 3 and M 4 are all identical to M 0. Okay. Here we will get 2 I 0 assuming that these are in saturation. Okay. So, you can even get multiples of a current or sub multiples of a current. And another way to think about this is that I replicate it on an identical device M 5, but the difference is that let us say M 0 has a width of W and a length of L, then M 5 will have a width of 2 W and a length of L. Again, using this value of V G S applied to uh, M 5 and using the current equation for M 5 in saturation region, you will find that the current flowing in here is 2 I 0. So, by scaling the width of the transistor, you can also scale the current and there is really no difference between the two. You can think of uh, tying multiple devices together as scaling the width by an integer factor. Okay. So, at this level of the course, this much is enough that connecting transistors in parallel is the same as scaling the width. Okay. So, this current mirror can not only replicate the current, it can also scale it. Okay. And this is a very important circuit, because later we will see that the preferred way of uh, biasing all transistors is to bias them at a constant current instead of constant V g s. So, that means that for uh, biasing every transistor, you need a current source of that value I naught. Okay. Where do these current sources come from? We have not yet discussed how to make a current source, but at least now we know that if we have one current source, we can create multiple current sources of scaled values. Okay. So, this current mirror is a very, very useful block in that sense. Okay. And we can also bias a transistor, which is being used for an amplifier in the form of a current mirror that we will see in the forthcoming lessons. Okay. So, hopefully the concept of current mirror is clear. It requires matched devices. On one of the devices, you establish the VGS using negative feedback by comparing the drain current with the desired drain current and feeding back to the gate of the transistor and you replicate that V G S on all of them, they will all have the same currents assuming they are in saturation region. Of course, there will be small differences, because the drain current does depend on the drain source voltage. Okay, There is that 1 plus lambda V D S factor. So, if the V D S of M 1 is different from V D S of M 0, the actual current will be slightly different, but for now we will ignore all those differences. Okay, In practice, you may have to take into account those things as well, depending on the level of accuracy that you want. Okay.